I mean, I, I guess I, I'm a little confused from your brief because it need from your brief. I thought you needed a direct connection between the assistance given and the actual act. So I came away from your brief thinking that what you were arguing was that they had to provide something specifically for this bombing. They had to provide either the platform for the people to get together or uh, for the actual people doing the bombing to get together or a text message or something that tied them to the crime. Are you moving away from that? No, I apologize for any unclarity and I appreciate the opportunity therefore to clarify it. You have to have known, well, number one, you have to have provided, the cause of action in this remedial statute derives from the act of international terrorism that injured the plaintiff. You had to have provided substantial assistance to an act of international terrorism that happened to be the one that injured the plaintiff. Otherwise, there's no connection between your assistance and the cause of action. What you don't have to know in advance is that the target would be the Reina nightclub as opposed to Taksim Square or the Paris Metro. So I guess I'm a little bit confused because as I read your brief, I remain confused, Mr. Waxman, you want a very direct um, tie between the form of assistance and the actual act. Am I correct? I, there must be. With or without knowledge that this is, will be yes. the act. Okay. Yes. So is there a difference between providing the gun or just providing money? Meaning uh, we have cases in the Second Circuit, and I'm sure you're familiar with I them. I am. The athlete case and the Kaplan case, in which they didn't provide a platform or a gun, but they provided money to people, and the fair inference from the evidence in both cases, people they knew were using that money for terrorist acts. And both circuits in this case sustained the claims of action here. So why was, why was the indirect assistance, fungible money, um, make those defendants liable, but you're not liable for providing a platform that you knew they were using to recruit people and to um, help arrange other terrorist acts, perhaps not this one, but you help the enterprise. So just in the same way, in the case that just talks about Halberstam. In Halberstam, the woman didn't know which bar burglary, where. Um, she didn't even know he was committing burglaries necessarily. She knew he was committing a property crime. She was just assisting his enterprise generally. So. Talk to I me about lot, what you're I hear a lot, of, a lot of questions, and I hope that I remember them all. Okay. If I haven't answered them Don't worry, them all, I'll come back to you. Okay, later. thank you. <laughs> First of all, the, the banking case, the banking cases in the Second Circuit and the pharmaceutical case in the D.C. Circuit are both, high, I mean, they, the, the, the salient distinction there is that the culpable conduct was, in fact, the active provision of something of assistance to the tortfeasor, whereas here, the actionable conduct is a failure to better ferret out violations of I don't think that that's right, Mr. I realize you have a lot of questions piled up there. <laughs> I, I, I do want them to come back to them, though. <laughs> I, 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 